Amen. You know, we're called to community. We're called to be the body of Christ and strengthen each other up. That's why we gather. Um, so before we get started today, uh, we have a very worship-heavy Sunday ahead of us today. Um, things will be a little bit different. So just real quick, I want everyone in the room to know and have permission and be encouraged uh, to do whatever you feel the Lord wants you to do this morning. So just real quick, anybody in the back, are you gonna be offended if somebody in the front row goes to the back to really just get their hands up and move and dance and do whatever they wanna do? Is that gonna bother you guys back there? No, okay. Hey, front row, if somebody in the back wants to come up here to the altar, maybe get on their knees or worship with their hands up, if somebody wants to move positions, is that gonna distract you or offend you? No? Okay. Hey, if you're sitting on the sides of a row here, if somebody in the middle of your row has to say, hey, excuse me real quick, I need to go up to the front, is that gonna bother you guys? Okay. So we have full permission this morning to worship however you want to. Okay, maybe, maybe you picked a seat because it looked good when you came in and then in the middle of worship, you're like, you know what, I need to move. The Lord is calling me to move somewhere else, do something different, stand, sit, kneel, whatever it looks like. You have full permission to do that this morning, okay? Greater you light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, you're rising higher with power to save, with power to save.
Because you are alive, Jesus, you are alive. its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope Amen church good morning how are you happy people doing you're looking good so like Ryan said, it's going to be a little different. Um, we was just praying about this. We want it more vertical. As we go out of 2023 into 2024, we're going out praising him with a bang. Amen, church? You can be seated for a couple of... I just want to take this time to... If you're a guest with us today, we'd like to welcome you. Welcome to the family. One time you're a guest, second time you're family. But if it's your first time here, um, in the seat in front of you, except for, for you beautiful people, there is a connect card in there. We would love for you to fill out that connect card. How you find us. If there's anything that we can do for you, we would love to. And uh, if you want to meet with one of the pastors, the, the good pastor, you can meet. Where's the other the good, the good pastors. But we just want to take that time today just to press into him. Amen, church? So um, for guests, we're not going to preach the amazing words that we normally preach here. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> I said it. So if you're a guest, it's going to be a little different. Definitely praise and worship intensive. But we're going to make opportunity to pe for people to receive prayer, for you to come up to the altar, to press into God. I'm believing that 2024 is going to be something amazing. 2023 had some great things that God done. But my expectation is, as I leave 2023 and push into 2024, that he's going to do something that is beyond belief. I'm believing that not only in my life, but I'm believing that for you also. That there is something that God wants to do for you and I that we have never seen. That we have never touched. Because that's the God that you and I serve. He wants to reach down from his throne room and he wants to infiltrate, so to speak, your life. And he wants to turn it right side up. He wants to change the unchangeable. He wants to break the chains that you were told could never be broken. He wants to set captives free. Amen, church? And if you're a guest with us online, we just want to welcome you this morning. Amen, church? Stand your feet with me. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. Yes. Oh God, my God. Stay. 
You're freeing hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You touch the lepers then. I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same
this morning, we're going to take advantage of this time. We're going to receive communion together. And again, like in worship, you may be seated, you can stand. You know, I'll say it again, if I can't emphasize enough that today the invitation is really is to worship God the way uh, that you feel comfortable, that you feel led. And, you know, if you're a guest with us, maybe you're new, maybe raising your hands is new. Maybe when we talk about coming to the altar, maybe that sounds like a new thing. Our goal really is to express our worship to God, one, in a way that we find in Scripture, which includes raising our hands and clapping and dancing and instruments and all of those things. So it's not a modern thing that we've just made up because we like music, as well as kneeling before the Lord, being prostrate before the Lord on our faces. I mean, the floor is hard, but it's still Bible. But it really is about expressing, and maybe for you, sitting in your chair today is fine, and no one is judging you, thinking that you're any less worship than the person who is on their knees on the floor or hands up. But it's really about you worshiping God. Now, we're here together to worship corporately together, which, yes, is scripture, and the Bible is full of examples of people coming together and God really showing up, manifesting himself when people come together. But it's not a faceless, nameless crowd. It's really about my worship combining with your worship and everyone else's worship to express our heart to God. And according to scripture, it pleases God. It's like a sweet smelling aroma when we worship him together. And in the same way as we receive communion, which by the way, if you did not receive uh, your little cup, just raise your hand. We have some ushers that will make sure that you get one. And if this is new, this is high tech way. They did it like this in Jesus day. Okay, maybe, maybe not. Um, so if you would open one end and you have the little wafer thing in there, and then after, don't open the juice first, open that part and then flip it over and go ahead and open the, the other part. But I want to read a passage that might be a little bit different for you for communion today. This is 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life, the life was manifested. And we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy, joy may be full. I love the way John addresses this Sometimes, sometimes Christianity, sometimes our walk with God, whatever you want to call it, however you, however you define it, sometimes it can be very mechanical. Sometimes, sometimes religion can be just that. It can be religion versus something that is personal. And John makes this statement and he starts, the disciple John starts out the book of John kind of the same way saying we saw him we were with him we touched him we heard with our own ears we experienced what he did ourselves we saw his life we saw the miracles we experienced the love and this is John who at the last supper laid his head on Jesus chest reclined next to him had a special relationship. This was not written from a theological theorist or from some philosopher who just had the idea of, oh, if you do these things, then it might be good for you. You see, if we're not careful, Christianity can become theory. If we're not careful, it can become religious and mechanical, and we can be really good at theorizing things like, 
being good people. We can theorize forgiveness. We can theorize salvation. We can theorize all of those things, but John makes it very clear. We tell you these things because we saw for ourselves. We held him ourselves. It's real and it's personal. Today as we receive communion and as we're worshiping, I just I want to encourage us today that we're not here, hopefully, we're not here just because it's our religious duty or it's what we do or it's tradition. Hopefully we're here because we ourselves have a relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus came and lived a perfect life. He gave up that perfect life for you and I, not just so that there will be a good story someday, but he did it so that we can, we can be up close and personal with God ourselves, so that we can also be hands-on with God, that we can have a personal relationship with him. All the way back in the Old Testament, God, the first time he gave the Ten Commandments to his people, he spoke it in their presence. It wasn't through Moses, it wasn't on tablets. He told Moses, tell the people, prepare yourselves. Come to me and I want to talk to you directly. And as is human nature, they got afraid. They got afraid of having to face God themselves, of having to face what God was saying, to face his word. They were afraid of comparing themselves to God's perfection. And so they said, Moses, you talk to God. And ever since, man has been trying to put a mediator between himself and God, and God has been trying to remove the mediator. Jesus Christ came to be our mediator once and for all so that you and I can have a real relationship that we can see and hear for ourselves, not just in theory. That we can actually put our hands on this faith thing. That we can actually put our hands on this salvation thing. That we ourselves can experience what it is actually like to be set free, to have power over sin. to know what it's like to be loved and accepted when we deserve to be rejected and judged. To know what it's like to be a part of a family, even though maybe our background is dysfunction and brokenness. Jesus did all of that so that you and I wouldn't just be Christian theorists or theologians or philosophers, that we ourselves would see with our own eyes and hear with our own ears and touch with our own hands this Savior who wants to make access to the Father because the Father wants to be hands-on with you. He wants to be up close and personal and hands-on with your life. He is not a God that's afar off. He's not a God of, of programs. And Now listen, God is a God of order and structure and not chaos. But this God of order and structure is also not indifferent and afar off. He sent his only son. He paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we don't have to just be a part of an organization or be a part of, of some philosophy group, some self-help group, some, some framework of religion, but so that you and I could have a personal relationship with him. Jesus, when he was with his disciples on his last night before he gave everything for us. They were celebrating the Passover, which if you're new to that idea, the Passover was a celebration that commemorated another time when God set his people free, when he provided a sacrifice, a way for them to have death pass them by. And not only did death pass them by and survive that night, but he led them out of their captivity, out of their chains, into their own place. Long before he took them to the promised land, he brought, a brought him to himself. And the Passover is the celebration of that. And Jesus on the Passover, 
made a statement that basically declared that that Passover was symbolic. It was a pre-runner. It was a foreshadow of what Jesus himself was about to do. He was about to shed his blood on the doorpost of your life so that death would pass over. But not only so that you could have salvation and hope for heaven at the end of this life, but so that you could be marched out of captivity this side of heaven. So that you could live free, that you could live redeemed, that you could live in a world that's dark and heavy, you could know peace and joy and love and patience and kindness and goodness, and you wouldn't have to try to follow rules to do it, but he would make a way to put that in you so it would come out of you. Because religion tries to make you do stuff to be right, and Jesus came to do the stuff to make us right. The holiness becomes the byproduct, not the framework, not the theory of what we do. And on that night, he took the bread, he like he always did with bread. He took it, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. And he said, this is my body. He did it with the bread and he did it with his own physical body. This is my body broken for you. My body's broken so you can be whole, so you can be healed so you can have whole relationships, so you can be whole and right with God, so that you're, the body of Christ can be, actually be a thing. But also so you yourself can be whole. The Old Testament says by his stripes, we are healed. By what he suffered, we have wholeness. And as he did these things, he says, do this in remembrance of me. Remember that you were with me. Remember you saw with your own eyes, you heard with your own ears, and you touched with your own hands. Listen, if you're here today, maybe you're far from God. This is not about membership in a church or a congregation or a religion. This is about membership with Jesus Christ, being a part of him. If you're a guest, maybe you've been far from him, it's as simple as coming back to him. It says he is, the word says he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we just confess with our mouths, where it says if you can believe in your heart that he is who the Bible says he is, he is the son of God and he gave his life for you. You believe that and you just confess with your mouth, Jesus, I need you to be my wholeness. I need you to be Lord. I need you to be the one that fixes it, to be in control, because I cannot. And that's way more words than you even need to pray. When I got saved, it was simply saying, Jesus, I've made a mess. If you can do anything with this life, I'll follow you. And he saved me. No music in the background, no priest to make it a done deal. No pastor to take my tithe and make sure it was all good. It was just a hands-on, personal encounter, and you can have that right now. And that qualifies you to do this with us. Or maybe you've been far from God, and the scripture says, don't do this in an unworthy manner, which sometimes we take it not seriously enough, but we should take it, we should take it seriously. But he also makes a way, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, there's been times where I walked into this kind of situation with junk and stuff, and maybe I wasn't so nice to my wife, or maybe I had some attitude issues or whatever. And I've remembered where the scripture says, don't do this in an unworthy manner. And I didn't look at it as a disqualification. I looked at it as a prompting to get myself right. So maybe you just need to get right. Jesus, I just got to get right with you. You broke your body for me. You shed your blood for me. Who am I to try to keep control of this? I surrender. 
me, Lord. And it can be that easy. So having said that, he took it, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it. It really is a sign, not just to remember, but for it to become tangible. That this isn't just theory, it's not just an idea, but it's real and personal, and it's a hands-on encounter with a hands-on God. So Lord, thank you for your broken body. You blessed it, you broke it, and you gave it. So Lord, today we receive it in Jesus' name. Go ahead and take the bread. And then there is the blood. And Jesus said, this is the blood of a new covenant shed for the many, not just the 12 guys sitting around the table, but for all those who would believe and receive, according to John chapter 1, he would give the right to become children of God. Not by your work, not by your effort, not by your striving, not even by your knowledge of the Bible, but by your knowledge of Jesus Christ and your receiving of his blood over your life. Well, Pastor, I'm just not sure if I'm right with God yet. I need to wait until I can get it together so I can accept Jesus, so I can follow him. Well, that's kind of like cleaning up before you take a shower. The shower does the work. You just bring your dirt, just bring your stuff, and allow the blood of Jesus to cover you. So, Lord, thank you that you loved us enough to give it all. One drop would have been plenty. You gave it all for us. For our sin, for our iniquity. But Lord, to cover the mercy seat so that when the Father looks, he doesn't see a sinner. He sees a son and a daughter. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for the power and authority over all of the things we have no power and authority over ourselves. And in the same way, we take it with our hands and we tangibly receive the work that you've done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and receive. I'd just like to invite you again, if you want to just come to the altar stand, kneel, go on your face, kneel here, wherever your seat, wherever you are in the room, but just between you and him again, just take the time with your own ears, your own eyes, your own hands to be, just behold him during this time. If you'd like someone to agree with you in prayer, come find one of us, come find one of our prayer ministers, and we'd love to pray with you. Oh, 
You know, we're gonna invite the prayer team uh, to go hang out in the backs of the rooms. Um, if you want someone to agree with you in prayer, if there's anything that you need, even right now, maybe the Holy Spirit is stirring something up in your heart that you think, I need to go handle this. I need to go put the blood of Christ on this. Um, we have teams of people to pray with you in that area in the back. So I, as I was preparing today, I was really thinking about what does, it, what does his atonement actually mean? What did he really do? You know, we were, the, we were singing one of the verses on the song about his word never fails. It's the one absolute we can always stand on. And I was, thinking, I was going through scripture 
that was reading about when he went to the cross. It says he bore our iniquities. Yes, he did to take our sins away. Then it says that he bore all of our illnesses and all of our sicknesses. But you know what another verse says? It's, it's interpreted the Hebrew word. He says he took all of our pain. He also took a pain, our pain. All of that, all of that. When he said it is finished, it, he didn't do it just in part, just for salvation. It's a whole entire package that he gave us. We could be whole and complete. Um, Deb was sharing with me before the worship set, Psalm 1. It says we're a tree that those of us that are righteous and that love the Lord, we're like this beautiful tree planted by the river and the roots go deep and we have living water, which is Jesus. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to have full, complete health. He wants us to have longevity and long life. He doesn't want our life to be cut short. He doesn't want the devil to take away our health. He has the whole thing for us when he went to the cross. So this morning when I was coming up the hill and I was praying, the Lord told me, I was singing this old song, this is the day the Lord hath made. I'll rejoice and be glad. I know you guys know that. He told me that today is a day for healing for people. That it's a day going into a new year. He doesn't want us to go in a new year not prospering, to not have good health to not have well-being. He wants us to go in a new year with power and might of the Holy Spirit. How can you do that when you're sick in your body or you have chronic pain? So he told me this morning, anybody that's in here, he, he, when he went to the cross for pain, he told me this morning that some people here today are suffering from chronic pain. That is not life. Anybody that needs prayer today for chronic pain in your body, he already paid the price for it. He has it for you today. If you have a physical ailment, do you have sickness? It says he already went to the cross. We took communion. He was broken bread and poured out wine for us already. It's already a gift. You just receive it. So he has healing for you today. Don't go into the new year knowing that you have healing and it's right here. Please accept it today. We have people to pray for you that we would love to pray for you and see you healed and whole as you walk out this door today. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do this. It, if that word is for you, I, I would like you to come forward. I'm going to have our prayer team, instead of being at the back, I want you to come to the front. I, I'm standing here because I'm in chronic pain. And I want somebody to pray for me. And I'm not going to miss what God wants to do today. Amen, church? So that encourages me. God spoke to Nikki and said, now is the time. I'm just saying this. Don't let the enemy rob you. Come up to the front. Receive prayer. There's a prayer team over there. There's a prayer team over here. Our pastors will come up and pray. We have leadership in the church that will pray. Do not miss this time. Keep that going for a second. This is the day the Lord has made for healing. He wants to heal you all chronic pain in bodies right now. By the blood of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over chronic pain. In the name of Jesus, we tell it to go. It doesn't have to go on for years and years. There could be an expiration date on pain. We just pray right now. Sean, we pray right now, chronic pain be gone in the name of Jesus from your body. You don't have to carry that around in your body anymore. Everyone here, if you have that, Jesus says, be healed today. You're going to walk out the door, and he's going to touch your body. Also, addictions. If anybody has addictions here, he wants to heal that too. My son has addictions. He's my prodigal. And he'll set you free from that too. We, we, we sang about chains being broken, God bringing freedom. 
He's going to bring freedom for that too. And he's going to set people free from that that's gone on for years and years. And it's going to be broken off of, off of everybody. Lord, we just pray right now, physical healing. Your word says we come in the prayer of faith, that we come with anointing oil and we anoint people and that they'll be healed by the prayer of faith. It's a real thing. Jesus, when he sent people, his disciples out, he gave them power to heal. And we just ask that in the Holy Spirit that you would come this morning and have your way and heal your people today. Lord, that's what we ask. We thank you. We give you all the praise.
hands and lift your voice.
Good. 